I'm delighted to welcome you to NTU Singapore. Where you spend the next few years of your life is one of the major decisions facing you. So my one piece of heartful advice, please choose the university that offers the best fit for you. Many universities may look similar, but here I would like to outline for you NTU's distinctive strengths and how it differs from the rest. The COVID-19 pandemic has reinforced the role of universities in providing critically needed and timely information, scientific know-how, and support to policymakers and governments. We aim to be a great global university founded on science and technology, nurturing leaders, and creating societal impact through the interdisciplinary education that includes humanities, the arts, social sciences, business, and medicine. To accomplish this goal, we launched an important initiative, NTU 2025, which is our five-year strategic plan earlier in January this year. NTU 2025 will establish specific pathways and initiatives to strengthen NTU's four core pillars, education, research, innovation, and community. Educating and training the next generation of thinkers, innovators, leaders, and lifelong learners is central to our mission. We will intensify our focus on interdisciplinary approaches across both education and research and expand holistic learning opportunities for students through a variety of mechanisms. These include new interdisciplinary programs, new approaches for industry internships for all undergraduate students starting this year, new learning spaces and models that tap into advances in the science, art, and technology of learning, new industry-relevant, modular, continuing education course offerings. Set to nurture leaders with character, competence, and cognitive agility, a carefully designed interdisciplinary core curriculum will be launched later this year to emphasize digital literacy, teamwork, communication skills, experiential learning, and global citizenship. We will equip NTU students with the skills and knowledge necessary to thrive in a rapidly changing workplace and in rapidly changing living environments to be future-ready graduates. Looking beyond grades, NTU offers many programs outside of the classroom that provide experiential learning. Your development will not be confined to academics. You will also grow as artists, musicians, athletes, and socially engaged citizens. Research and education activities will be integrated more closely, giving students increased opportunities to engage in research and creative work in their undergraduate journey. On this campus, you will find industry leaders such as HP Inc., Rolls-Royce, and Volvo conducting cutting-edge research and technology development together with our faculty, staff, and students. This research also tackles some of the most complex challenges that society faces in such areas as sustainable energy sources, aging, food security, cybersecurity, and climate change. Last month, as you may have heard, scientists in NTU reported that they have created a way for humans and plants to communicate with each other. This research opens the door to new technologies that make use of plants. So please don't be alarmed to see some students or even professors talking to our trees on our beautiful campus with lush greenery. 
This seemingly unusual behavior could be part of groundbreaking research. As a leading provider of continuing education, we will help students navigate through the dynamic changes in the workplace and develop a mindset that prepares them for lifelong learning. We aim to share NTU's unique strengths in educational research, ed tech, science of learning, and pedagogical techniques through strategic collaborations with other institutions. In the coming years, my colleagues and I look forward to supporting your intellectual pursuits, nurturing your success in your academic achievements, as well as extracurricular pursuits, and learning about the social issues that inspire you to action. At NTU, you will learn, live, play, and build lifelong memories and friendships in a beautiful and welcoming campus, which is a small city. I invite you all to participate in this extraordinary journey. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Dear says hello. Welcome to the E Open House for Nanyang Technological University's School of Physical and Mathematical Sciences, also known as SPMS. Woo! We're here with the Physics and Applied Physics Division, also known as PAP. Woo! Now, just to clarify that we are in no way involved in any politics whatsoever, despite sounding so. So compared to the virtual open house that we had earlier in February, this e open house will be a slightly more chill, more casual version. And most importantly, this is an invite-only session that is specially curated for all you prospective students. So we're currently at the green screen studio. It's really cool. This is how Avengers act out all their scenes. It's green around us, but you guys can't see it. But that's the whole point. Anyway, moving on. My name is NJ, the co-founder of a science channel called Just Keep Thinking, and it is my pleasure to be your MC for today. Woo! Okay, it's my third round of MCing. I'm really excited. I'm super enthusiastic because all the particles in my body are of a, a higher energy level state, like an excited state. Did I got it right? Okay, so hopefully we will be able to give you a rather informative and mildly entertaining session for the next one and a half hours. So let's get right into it. Talking about physics, um, personality is one of the most boring topics for me. Please don't kill me. I just didn't continue in JC like 80% of the females out there. But I remember that when I watched Interstellar and I got lost after the whole movie, my friend had to sit me down and he was trained in physics. So explaining to me all the theories and whatever that's happening in the movie. And I was so impressed and he was like, it's physics. So I think physics is really interesting. And I hope to gain more insights in this field from our list of speakers today. So introducing our first speaker of the day, it will be Associate Professor Cheng Siu An, who will be giving a general overview of what PAP is all about. If you guys have any questions throughout the whole sharing session, you may take it in your questions below so that we may answer them during our Q&A segment later on through Slido. Also, you may take it in your questions via PAP's Telegram channel at ATU underscore physics. Without further ado, let's get the ball rolling by inviting Prof Chung. Prof Chung, you may begin. Okay, so uh, welcome. Um, so uh, this year, the curriculum is going to be uh, very different, the physics degree program. So because uh, of a new initiative by NTU, uh, your degree program, instead of just studying physics and then doing some general education courses and then taking some unrelated, uh, not relevant courses, to make up the graduation requirement. Uh, this year, first, you, know, we have, you have to first take an interdisciplinary collaborative core. Uh, this is common to all NTU students, so anyone, who, whatever major they are in, they have to take this. Uh, and then after that, the second part of your uh, degree program would be on the major requirements. Okay? And then uh, the last part uh, is, instead of uh, unrestricted electives, uh, NTU prefer to call this uh, broadening and deepening electives. So let's see what you, what you have to do for the interdisciplinary collaborative core. So first of all, there are 17 academic units of university core courses that you have to take. Uh, one academic unit is equivalent to one hour a week of contact time. 
And then, of course, uh, adding to it uh, will be the college core for this interdisciplinary collaborative core. And then for the major requirements, we actually offer uh, four different uh, degree programs. The first one is uh, pure physics, uh, which is made up of 62 core uh, academic units, and then 13 or 8 academic units, depending on whether you choose to do the final year project or to go for a long internship. And then, uh, so, and then the broadening, uh, deepening electives the number of hours for this will be 30 academic units and then uh, this is uh, very this is this is there's a applied physics that parallels a pure physics again 62 plus 13 or 8 and then it, it also comes with uh, 30 academic units of broadening and deepening electives and then after that we have our physics and mathematical sciences uh, double major program the core would consist of 87 academic units and then the electives will consist of 22 academic units and then because it is already interdisciplinary, so the number of broadening and deepening electives that uh, students need to do to complete the degree would only be eight. And then our second interdisciplinary uh, major uh, is the physics with a second major in uh, microelectronics engineering. Uh, here you have to complete 97 core uh, academic units for, to, to complete both physics and microelectronics engineering. And then uh, you have to do 13 electives or eight, depending uh, whether you do the FYP or you do a long internship. And then again, because this is interdisciplinary, uh, you only need to do seven uh, broadening and deepening, uh, 17 AUs of uh, seven AUs of broadening or deepening electives to complete the degree program. So, uh, so this is the, the the very broad overview of the course, the degree programs that we have. Uh, and then, of course, students may ask, you know, what do you learn in NTU uh, when you come in and do a physics degree program? Uh, and actually, the first year, uh, everyone learns pretty much the same thing. So you learn the, the foundational conceptual understandings for physics as well as the mathematical foundation. So uh, every student does ex almost exactly the same thing. Uh, and then the second year, you continue with foundation building, uh, taking four core courses on classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, uh, electro dynamics and statistical thermodynamics. And it is only in year three uh, that the students start to differentiate into uh, the physics major, which is focused on understanding phenomenon, or the applied physics major, which is more oriented towards understanding the physics behind modern day technology. And then of course, uh, in year four, they can uh, choose to uh, make up some uh, optional concentrations. Uh, for example, in, for the physics major, they can do a concentration in nanotechnology, or for applied physics major, there are there's a more uh, optional concentration they can choose from, and then of course after that they will graduate with a bachelor's in physics or a bachelor's, well both of them are honors degree, so bachelor's and honors with in in physics or bachelor's with honors in applied physics, and then of course the the physics and mathematical sciences uh, double major program would be on the side of the pure physics, and then uh, we also have the PhMe. Uh, physics with a second major in uh, microelectronics engineering uh, that applies to the applied physics major. Okay, so so this is again the the, the curriculum structure, uh, and some of the stu some of the people we talk to they have the they have the the the, the misconception that uh, physics pure physics means that you do theory and applied physics means that you do experimental. When actually uh, both our degree programs is a good mix between theory and experimental as well as computational. So programming is a very important skill nowadays, and it's very, very useful in physics. So we make sure that students are taught uh, programming and also make use of it in our, in our courses. Okay, so what uh, precise exactly do you learn? So I can of course throw out all the names of the courses, and you, you, you'll probably get giddy by looking at it right now. But uh, to, 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 to summarize it, uh, you will gain content knowledge after going through our degree program. That means you know the Maxwell's equation. You can work for Singtel. You can you know, uh, understand how uh, light pulses uh, tr travel in uh, optical fibers. You can also understand you know, uh, electromagnetic waves. So you can work for DSO and understand you know, uh, the state of the art kind of a military uh, radar. Uh, but more importantly, we uh, equip students with skills. So they, because of the lab courses they go through, students are uh, very good at uh, uh, collecting data, very good at analyzing data, and very good at comparing the data, uh, the evidence uh, to see whether it agrees with a hypothesis that is uh, being uh, tested. But for most more importantly, at the end, 
we train our students to be scientists. So they, after four years, they would understand what the scientific approach is and, and try to approach everything with a scientific approach. Uh, that means you know, you, you're not superstitious, you don't go underneath a tree, you know, light some joysticks and ask for four numbers. Uh, so in, in, uh, in physics, you don't do that. Maybe you set up a random number generator to get those four numbers instead. I'm joking. Okay, so actually, the, 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 there's a lot of uh, reason why the physics as a discipline is still relevant uh, for the for modern day uh, economy. Uh, it, is, it is so because it is very versatile. And it is versatile because there is an emphasis in physics on mathematics, on uh, data collection and analysis, as well as on programming. So this is the, this in, in some sense is a unique combination that is found pretty much only in physics. And, and students who have done physics, therefore, uh, uh, can, can bring this unique combination of skills out into the, the working world and they will find themselves fitting into uh, multiple roles very, very easily. Now, so this then comes down to employability. So to help our students become even more employable, we have a cooperative education program where students get attached to the same company throughout the four years of education uh, and then eventually working on an uh, industry uh, a final year project. So to cap it off, and then after that, they, they're expected to join the company uh, and continue doing good work with the company. And then, of course, we also have the 10-week professional attachment. Uh, this is a short one. And then we have the 20-week uh, professional attachment, which have to be done over one of the, one of the two semesters. Okay? And then, of course, uh, I've mentioned before that uh, students doing the CEP are expected to complete an industry final year project, but uh, any students can actually opt for doing this also. So anytime you, you, they, they manage to find a company that's willing to sponsor the project, uh, they can do it. Okay, and then this is uh, a, a, a more recent survey of, that we have done of our graduates, and we see that uh, a, a significant portion of them does uh, end, ended up doing research or doing a PhD, but a large chunk of them also went into engineering jobs uh, and jobs in uh, commerce and management uh, and data science. Uh, this is an older survey. So now uh, that, 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 part, that segment of the pie has actually increased by quite a lot. And then uh, also uh, our graduates can find jobs, but they're also not working for peanuts. So you can look at the kind of uh, salary that they get and you see that the mean and the median salary are pretty respectable. They're not the highest for university graduates, uh, but they're also definitely not the lowest. So, uh, and definitely with this kind of salary, you should be able to uh, think about, you know, uh, make, uh, think about uh, setting up a family, buying a flat, uh, and doing all those things that, uh, you know, make you feel adult light. Okay? And one of the greatest uh, value add that we think we bring to our degree program is actually undergraduate research. So this can be done under, under the framework of Eureka, which is the university level framework, or it can be done under Odyssey, which is our school's uh, level uh, program uh, on uh, getting students involved in undergraduate research. Uh, and then, of course, we also have a course called Making and Tinkering. Uh, it's famous in NTU uh, because you know, students get to design uh, what they want to make uh, and, and actually uh, use the tools and the, the facilities available to make them. So one, in one year, I think one of the students made uh, a gigantic hot air balloon that was uh, released in Australia. Uh, and then another year, we, I, had a, I, I know of a student who built a Gauss cannon. Uh, when you're firing a nail, you can punch through a Coca-Cola can. Uh, any more powerful, he said he had to apply for a police permit. Okay? And then, of course, uh, students also do undergraduate research during the final year project, or they can do it overseas, or they can do it under the framework of Eureka, or they can just do it any time and anywhere that they like. Well, not any, anywhere, but in a lab. So these are two of our former students. Uh, both of them have completed their PhD. One of them is working for LAMS research in the US, uh, doing semiconductor uh, research. And the other one has joined Facebook uh, to do uh, augmented reality research. So that uh, who knows what you know, Facebook would uh, show to you next time. So maybe it will be, uh, part of it will be contributed by this gentleman over here. Okay, so, uh, so in the current climate, of course, I think we should maybe refrain from talking about overseas research exchange program. Uh, but uh, if, let's say, COVID blows over, then we have lots of partners everywhere in the world uh, that where you can actually contemplate going to for a semester or two doing uh, uh, exchange. 
Uh, and, but that will have to, I guess, have to wait for, uh, I guess, wait till the end of this year. The hope is that it will end at the end of this year. Uh, and then next year, we will have a brand new year ahead of us. Okay, so thank you. That's all I have to share. Thank you, Prof Chong, for the rather insightful sharing about what PAP is all about. Um, I would like to ask you, actually, like you said, that the PAP program has shifted a bit or modified slightly so that students can, they don't have to like study a lot more before they can graduate. So it's more fine. Well, it's, it's at the university level. So it's not just uh, us that is doing it. So all degree programs have to incorporate the 17 academic units of university mm. level core. Uh, and then uh, some number of un uh, academic units for the, the college core. Ah, so that will yeah. help to prepare them better. Be so so the, 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 again, the idea is to get students better prepared for the working mm. world. Because nowadays, uh, uh, first of all, you know, um, no, nobody works alone in the working world. So you have to work in teams. So the collab collaboration is becoming very important. It's uh, unfortunately classical, you know, uh, curricular don't emphasize that so we, we're starting to emphasize it more and then the other thing is that the singapore government uh, realizes that many of the problems that we face they are they don't sit nicely into disciplinary uh, boundaries so they frequently are found between uh, disciplines so which is why we have this emphasis on being interdisciplinary yeah, uh, that's great. yeah actually I, I can give an example uh, for example one of the course that uh, is in under this ICC uh, is a sustainability course so uh, no the students are going to learn sustainability from the context of uh, economics social and uh, sustainability uh, and environment so it's no it's a cross between um, you know uh, your arts and humanities business and uh, science and engineering so it's uh, it's a truly interdisciplinary uh, course and you'll be sitting in a class whereby your classmates uh, could be from humanities, could be from engineering, okay, could be from art design media school. So it's a, it's a very, you, we expect it to be a very vibrant um, you know, class. So there are also courses on healthy living and well-being, um, you know, on communication and so on. So it's a very nice package of courses you know, to equip the students to better prepare them for the working world. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Mr. Tong Jia Rui, who, will be, who, who, sorry, who is a SPMS alumni that graduated back in 2019. And he's here with us today to share with us more about his experience with the PAP division. Mr. Tong, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Okay, a very good afternoon to everybody. My name is Jia Rui, and for today's open house, I'll be doing the alumni sharing of my experience in SPMS. Okay, so for today, I'll go through uh, a bit about myself, my life in SPMS and NTU, and most importantly, how SPMS have developed me in both academy and practically. And uh, at the end of it, I'll give some takeaways for you uh, to uh, go through this, uh, survive through these four years, <laughs> right? So a bit of self-introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Tiare, and I have a bachelor in applied physics, and I managed to graduate in 2019, uh, way before COVID-19 is a thing. So I have a privilege to take picture without masks, okay? Okay, so I did my four years of undergrads from 2015 to 2019, and I have a concentration in semiconductor physics. So currently, um, I'm both an integration engineer in a company called Global Foundries. At the same time, I also an NTU PhD student uh, in applied physics. So this is this is possible because of this program called Industrial Postgraduate Program, also known as IPP, where you get to work and study at the same time. So you get both sides, uh, best thing of both worlds. So uh, a bit of job sharing about my role as an integration engineer. So as an integration engineer in Global Foundries, uh, my job is to integrate uh, this new technology called the resistive RAM. Okay, this resilient technology, I want to make it for commercial use. So this technology is actually very simple. It's made of three layers as shown in this diagram. So it's metal, insulated metal. And because of this, we can compact uh, all the memory cells to smaller size and all your internet of things devices like your AirPods and Apple Watch, all these, they will have um, a more memory, more function, while uh, you will only burn a lesser amount of battery. So moving on, my second job as an NTU PhD student. So currently, I've completed my second year as a student. 
And um, I'm doing research under the supervision of my prof, Prof Liu Wenxiang, uh, on semicon technology. So when I so while I'm doing uh, research on engineering, more towards engineering in my company, for my role in NTU, I'm more I'm more uh, interested in the science behind how all this resistive RAM works. And from then on, I integrate all these studies into the integration methods for uh, commercial use of this technology. So now, the fun part, my life in SPMS and NTU. So my life in SPMS and NTU has been very well balanced and it's very fun. So for non-academic, there's a wide variety of CCAs from sports, from arts, they can join. And in SPMS, there's SPMS event like orientation camps, Halloween, Valentine's Day. And for physics, there's even a PAP day where we all come together, celebrate, take good, um, free gifts, free food, everything. Yeah, so as you can see, I joined the Cultural Activity Club uh, Orientation Camp and also because uh, I love to dance, so I decided to join Breakers Club. Yeah, and I cannot do that anymore. Yeah, it's been quite some while. <laughs> All right, for academic-wise, yeah, the syllabus is challenging yet interesting at the same time, okay? And in, in SPMS, there's also a lot of physics-related competition like what uh, Prof. Chang has shared and also uh, overseas exchange opportunities. And definitely, there's also a lot of internship and FYP opportunities for you, for you to um, expand your interest, to explore what you like. So while there's a lot of like, glamorous pictures of my um, social life, most of my albums will be all on the random lecture notes, random tutorial questions that you um, maybe suddenly zone out during lecture and you have no time to copy down. So that's what you do. You take a phone, snap pictures, and you fill out a whole gallery like those. So my year in year three and year four is quite fun. I managed to go for a winter exchange in Beijing where I go to uh, the university to learn TCM. And you can see from the picture, we also go to the Temple of Heaven in Beijing, the Great Wall of China, so and so forth. And also I managed to join a dance performance. Uh, I did a breakers performance. And also, I did a combined fusion performance where uh, a different dance come together and put up a show together. And as for year four, I managed to dance again. I went for a culture activity club ball and have fun there. And after that, I joined the internship at Global Foundry, where is now uh, my my uh, where I work at now. And yep, I managed to graduate with my batch of friends without mass. <laughs> so. How SMS has developed me both academically and practically. So definitely, throughout the four years, you will know something or more about physics. You will see a lot of equations, and somehow you get to understand what all those equations mean, as I shown in this slide. And also, you'll get exposed to different physics fields, and you'll get all these physics fields will link to um, engineering, a real life application. And SPMS also will invite famous researchers from around the world. All these researchers are top of their field. They are Nobel laureates. They are like the BTS of K-pop and everything. And you can ask them questions, and they, are, they can give you what they do, and maybe they can inspire you to continue with their research. And also, you also get to do a lot of, collect a lot of data, and definitely you need to have a lot of uh, information processing skills when you Wikipedia something, you Google something, there's a lot of um, not relevant data to your or information to whatever you're doing. So you need to know how to process all those information. And definitely some analytical skills when you, when you get all your data, what makes sense, what don't make sense, you get to learn how to judge it for yourself and have a logical way of thinking. So other particular development apart from physics knowledge Definitely, without you knowing, you have better time management, and you, you sub subconsciously you get better to work with teams, which is very essential in working in company level, you know. And also presentation skills, how to pitch your ideas in the shortest time and the best way, and also you also have the grid, you know. In the world, nothing you nothing you be succeeded in one try, so you'll be there'll be lots of failures over and over again, and you need to. Like have the grid to carry on. So some notes for you about how I prepare for graduation. So I, you must find your interest in your specific field within like these four years. For me, I found my interest in semiconductor physics. From there, um, there'll be a lot of career fairs, career talks, career sharing. 
Um, mostly nowadays it's done online because of COVID, but all these are still available. You can still uh, approach um, to the website to link and you can ask them questions. And from there, when you find out like, which company is hiring, what criteria they're looking for, then after that, you can better prepare yourself for that. So how do you prepare yourself? Okay, for myself, I decided to upgrade myself. So from there, I decided to upgrade, uh, take up relevant modules for my like year three and year four. And also the internet is an amazing thing. You can learn all relevant skills on the internet and all of them are free, okay? And I managed to find a good internship, which uh, currently I'm working in the same company after that. And what you can do also, you can also find a career coach, and this career coach will actually teach you skills on resume writing, interview skills, and networking skills, how you're gonna be a notch better than the rest of the uh, people who try to go for the interview. So finally, some takeaways from me to you guys. Okay, so university education is gonna be challenging, yet it can be fun too, okay? As long as you have a um, good work-life balance, join a CCA, uh, find out what you're passionate about, apart from uh, academics. And also, if you are struggling, just remember that help is always available in NTU and SVMS as long as you seek it, okay? So in SVMS physics, there's like prep class for ORD NSF. Yeah, so I know a lot of the Singaporean sons, you've been wearing a helmet for the past one year, 10 months. So basically know all the immediate juice better than differential equation. So this is the class for you. And also, not to worry, in SPMS, there's a progressive syllabus. We won't ask you to do some high-level quantum mechanics in year one. Even though you know how to do it, you still need to go through the syllabus to ensure that you get a foundation right. Also, there's also a friendly tutors, friendly professors that will take time to have private consultation with you. All you need to do is drop their email and just uh, go to their office and they'll just teach you one-on-one. -on -one. And, and most importantly, I think, SPMS always prepare me to be workforce ready for me to uh, tackle all the tasks ahead while I'm working in the company. And apart from that, in NTU career office, okay, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of causes for you to sure to network, how to pitch yourself before your potential employers. Yep. Also, resume writing, all the hiring uh, HR hiring managers, they go through a lot of resumes every day. So how you how you gonna phrase your words? use the keywords for them to catch their attention in the shortest time possible. Also, the interview, interview skills, yeah, you can, there's career coach, you can, uh, they'll go through like rounds and rounds of rehearsal or interviews with you, and also give you tips on how to pitch yourself, market yourself, so that you'll be better than others. So that's all from me. Uh, hope to see you guys in physics, and yeah. Thank you, Tiare, for sharing really important advice and tips for all of our prospective students out there. I should have a question for you. So, you mm -hmm. did bring that break dancing, right? Yep, the yep. Days. Do you apply your physics knowledge to it? <laughs> like, when you spin on the ground, like, if you put your arms closer, you'll spin faster, then the velocity will increase. And uh, actually, we did. But then oh. we subconsciously managed to do it, okay? So, like, when we are doing a freeze, uh, uh, maybe a handstand, you must, like, Really, where is the center of gravity? How is everything? So that you won't fall down, you manage to hold in a position for the longest time possible to get out of the walls for the crowd. And definitely when you spin, when you when your hands are closer to you, so you will move faster. And that's a, another wow factor. Yeah. I see. That's physics for you. Thank you so much, Shari. Just a reminder for all of you, if you have any questions, please do send it in so that we may answer them during our Q&A session later on. Or you may also ask via PAP's Telegram chat at NTU underscore physics. The next PAP speaker of the day is Michael Su, who is currently a student here and he will be sharing experience in NTU's PAP's division. It's probably very fruitful and exciting, right? Yeah, yeah, live session, you cannot say otherwise. <laughs> okay, joking, joking. That's why he's here today. It's a positive experience. So, Mr. Su, whenever you're ready, you may take it away. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael, and today I'll be talking about my life in NTU. So, I'll go through in chronological order from what I joined in year one and all the way until year four. So, when I was year one, I joined the freshman orientation camp, and I joined the hall orientation camp as well as the Cultural Activity Club orientation camp. So fun fact, the previous speaker, Jare, was my group leader. So it's fun seeing him again today. So this was some pictures of my hall camp, oh, as you can see. 
So for the cultural activity camp, we also went to the beach to have some fun during freshman. And after freshman, I decided to give back to the NTU community. So me myself, I decided to join as an orientation group leader. And I wanted the freshies to have the same good memories that I had when I joined as a freshman. So these are some of the photos that we did as uh, during the senior camp. So we, we were preparing for our freshman orientation camp. So this is another picture where we were just having fun. I was bringing around my freshmen on the beach day as well as in school in NTU. So apart from that, as someone who's both equally passionate in physics as well as in the arts, I decided to join various uh, arts-related CCA in NTU. So the first is the Hall Jam Band in Crescent Hall. So we performed for various events and I joined a band and my genre is rock, so I'm the guitarist over there. We also have uh, open jam sessions where people just come down to enjoy and have a good time. We also perform for events such as Halloween and as well as this event called My Stage on the Right, where we performed for a live audience in front of the supermarket in NTU. So this was a very memorable experience. So apart from that, we also had the chance and the privilege to perform for NTU's open house back then. And these are just some of the few pictures that we had. And I will show you a snippet of one of the hall performances that we had, which was during the cultural night. So apart from that, we also had the opportunity to perform for Fuse, which was an inter-hall school jam band competition that we performed at this venue called Canopy K in NTU. So this is another snippet where we performed our Take Heart by the Sam Willows. Yes, so apart from that, I also joined the Crescent Hall Student Council. So what we do is that we serve the hall residents and one of the mem very memorable event was this event called Meet and Greet, Donut Meet and Greet, where we offered a resident a donut from Krispy Kreme if they came down and you know, shared with us their experience or any feedback for the hall in general. And we also organized various events for the hall residents to participate in. So these are some of the photos with my hall council members. So apart from music, I also tried to join dance because I had no prior experience. I decided to join So Funky Pop and Lock. And it was a very memorable experience because we had the opportunity to perform for many events and I learned a lot about dance as well. So one of the events that we performed for was for the freshman welcome ceremony. And in addition, we also had uh, inter-dance sharing on the right, as you can see. So the So Funky Pop and Lock uh, CCA was a very vibrant and inclusive community and I had a lot I had a lot of fun uh, performing and as well as going for the trainings. One of the performances was for the joint dance concert, as you can see on the right, where we all dressed up as characters from the Mario series, where we have Mario, Luigi, Waluigi, and Wario. And as you can see, it's many people and we all had a lot of fun. So this is one of the snippets of our performance for joint dance concert, also known as JDC. So apart from that, uh, I'm also in currently in the CN Young Scholars Program. Oh, sorry, not currently. I already graduated. Uh, I'm in the CN Young Scholars. I was in the CN Young Scholars Program, and we also had a lot of events that catered to our social welfare and ensured that we had a very good time in NTU. One of them, for example, as you can see on the left, was the Perch, which was a, a Halloween event where people just came down dressed up as Halloween character and had a lot of fun. We also had uh, dinner and dance. So uh, the photo on the right, as you can see there, is uh, my group for making and tinkering. So as Prof Chong mentioned just now, there is one module called making and tinkering where we literally make things out of thin air. As in not thin air, sorry. Uh, we just 
uh, pitch our design and if the prof is okay with our design, we proceed with our prototype. So for my team, we made a foldable lunch box made out of silicone and I had a lot of fun designing it from scratch and producing it. So this was one of the memorable takeaways from PAP as well. So apart from that, I also had the opportunity to go for an overseas learning trip in CERN. And this was especially uh, memorable to me because back in 2012, when I first heard about the Higgs boson discovery, I was very intrigued on how this could even happen. So when I actually set foot in real life into where this discovery was made, I was more than ecstatic. So that's a picture of me on the left inside the Large Hadron Collider. And I even had the chance to meet uh, notable distinguished professors such as uh, Albert de Rock and Prof. Jonathan. So this all in all was a very memorable experience and once in a lifetime chance. So this was us uh, climbing the mountains in Sun. And these are some of the videos that I took when I was in Sun. So the building over there <laughs> is one of the most notable structures that people think of when they think of Sun, apart from the Large Hadron Collider. And this was one of the videos where I went to visit the Atlas in CERN where they visited uh, where they showed how you can produce the collisions so during my third year in fresh uh, in NTU I had the opportunity and the privilege to go for exchange for me I went to the University of Glasgow in Scotland for exchange and prior to that I went for a pre-trip in Norway and as you can see it was a very beautiful experience and I hope sincerely hope that you will have the chance to do exchange as well when the situation hopefully gets better so these are some of the photos that I took when I was in the University of Glasgow. That's me and my pals where we went for the exchange. And this is where the University of Glasgow was. I had many fond memories of my exchange experience and generally I felt that that was one of the best times I had in NTU where I had the opportunity to meet people from different backgrounds and so on and so forth. And it was an eye-opening experience. So as the saying goes, work hard, play hard. I also love physics a lot and generally I have a lot of passion for physics and this is one of the experiments in one of the module that we, you will be experienced, exposed to which is uh, the laboratory one module and one of the experiments is the electrostatic okay. experiment Thank you. Time so using the concept of static yeah, electricity you can generate spark as you will see in the video here Okay. Yep, so you get to experience all these kind of cool stuff, not just electrostatic, but many, many other experiments that I find very cool and interesting. So apart from that, I also conducted in research. So my research area is known as ultra cold atoms. So essentially what happens when atoms get super cold. And I conducted my research inside the Strontium Laboratory in Center of Quantum Technologies in NTU. And the picture on the right shows uh, my presentation poster when I was doing networking and outreach. And I had a lot of fun doing all these kind of stuff. So as someone who is more of an experimental physics, I like to build things from scratch. So this is just a sample video of what I was doing during my final year project. So I built an uh, experimental setup from scratch. Yep, so that's all I have to share. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Su, for sharing your undergraduate journey experience with all of us. Uh, seeing your slides actually remind me of my own younger days where I'm young, wild, and free. And personally, it's also my undergraduate days were some of the best days in my life, and I hope it will be the same for all of you guys as well. Okay, next up, ooh, we have something special in store. It will not be a sharing lecture. I mean, sorry, not, it will not be a sharing segment, but it will be a mock lecture by Dr. Ho Shen Yong on. Do, 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 do. To fantastic laws of our physical world and how to use them. I'm really super excited about this. I promise you this is one lecture that you will not fall asleep in. Dr. Ho, once you're ready, the stage is all yours. Thank you, DJ. MJ, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, so um, I'm Shen Yong. Uh, my student addressed me as uh, Dr. Ho. Um, so the talk that I'm going to, the, the, the mock lecture that I'm going to talk on is uh, fantastic laws of our physical world and how to use them. Okay, so you probably have learned a lot of mathematics you know, in your secondary school, in your polytechnic or in JC, and you take a lot of things for granted. Okay, actually a lot of these things that you know are no less magical okay, um, and mysterious than what you see in this show here. Okay, and today I'm wearing something like a 
piece of graph paper, actually, um, and uh, it goes well with what I'm going to do. Okay. So um, to make the lesson more interactive, um, so um, if you could, okay, uh, please uh, log on, okay, uh, to this website. Okay, um, okay, not everyone can be David, uh, David Beckham, so you could just type any first name. It doesn't have to be a real name. Uh, it doesn't have to be a real email address. No, you just agree, and then you just click start. And after that, no, you just type in the session ID. Okay, and you see a question on your mobile phone. Okay, you just sign on and you answer this question on your mobile phone. Uh, and uh, no, no, you can participate no, uh, live no, in this lesson. Okay, so just now Jari mentioned the physics uh, preparatory course uh, for NS guys. Oh, no, it's also open for girls actually. So I, I will be teaching that course, but I, I would usually do it in my living room. I mean, okay. Um, especially now with the COVID situation, usually there are hundreds of students, okay, uh, you know, the physics and the engineering students, uh, there'll be lots of students, so um, no, we can't do it in person, so we will have to um, rely uh, on online technology and then we'll be doing it on Zoom and so on. Okay, so uh, okay, let, let's move on. Okay, um, so one of the things uh, that you think about um, you know, when you do physics or actually any other uh, discipline, uh, it's time, actually. There are things that change with time. Okay, so of course you know um, about yourself, your, your weight, your height, you know, um, you know, and of course now the, the number of COVID infection Okay, um, no, it changes, the dead number changes with time. Okay, so I'm going to invite you, okay, um, to actually um, think about some quantities that change with time, okay, and, and in a short while, no, I'll get your response. Okay, so maybe um, just look at the responses for the first question. Okay, um, okay, let me just try to enlarge my screen and let's see your responses. Okay, so we have someone from Malaysia. Okay, so you're a little out of this map. Okay, let me, oops. Okay, sorry, let me just, uh, okay. Okay, I, I, I can't really enlarge this. Okay, so here we see the green dots. Okay, where, so you're all scattered over Singapore. Okay, so it, it, it's nice that we have this technology that you can be anywhere in Singapore and then yet we can still interact live. Okay, so thanks for those who have uh, responded. So now I'm going to go on to the second question. Okay, um, I'm going to post this to you uh, and see if you've got something interesting that you can think about. The quantities that change with time. Okay, it doesn't have to be a physics quantity. Okay, it can be something else. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait for like 20, 30 seconds and uh, no, we'll, we'll take a look at your responses, okay? Um, so of course you are a tech guy, no, you're maybe you think about electric field, okay, that's, uh, that's a possible answer. No, you think about mass, no, you think about maybe um, the velocity or acceleration and so on, or temperature, and I've got very interesting answers here. Okay. Ah, okay. I think we should we should just look at uh maybe we'll come over to my laptop and, and look at uh the answers that the participants have uh, submitted. Okay, your mood, uh, okay. It's probably not easy to quantify your mood, your happiness. Your IQ, yeah. So hopefully you'll go up a lot, no, um when you come to NTU, okay, not only we try to teach you skills and content, no, we also make you think hard and hopefully, no, your brain muscles will be very, very strong, okay, by the time you leave NTU. Emotions, age, okay, weight, okay, yes, yeah. So usually your weight before dinner and after dinner is different. <laughs> uh, so sometimes I weigh myself before I eat, no, just to know how much I can eat, okay? Okay, good, so, so we have lots of uh, interesting um, answers. 
So now we're going to go on to something a little bit more serious. Okay, but we'll start very gently. Okay, um, so you would have seen this um, graph. Okay, um, no, many times, no, in your career as a student. So this is a uh, x against t graph. So x can represent a lot of things, and here we have a straight line that passes through the origin. Okay, and uh, no, you probably still remember this, even though you have gone to NS. Know that the gradient of a line is the change in the vertical coordinate divided by the change in the horizontal coordinate, right? Because you have to charge up a hill, right? So if the hill is very steep, the line it has a very, very large gradient. Okay, so if the change in x is very large over a small delta t, now you have a very steep line. Okay, to make life a little bit more interesting, okay, you see more curves actually in the university. Okay, so if you have a curve, how do you get the gradient? So if you're interested to look at the gradient at a certain point, you mark out a point, and you draw a tangent line just touching you know, the curve at one point, and then you do this straight line, and again, you get you draw the triangle, and then you work out the change in x divided by the change in t. Okay, so in the limit that is very, very small, the change in x is very small, then we write this as dx dt. So those of you who have learned differentiation, you probably recognize this symbol, but those of you who have not, no, don't worry, no, there is a course on calculus no, when you join NTU no, and you learn this um, no, in within one semester. Okay, but today we'll see how much no, you can learn okay, um, no, online. So now if I say dx dt, okay, which is the gradient, is equal to 5. Okay, how does the graph of x against t look? Okay, so no, it's going to be always the same value. So you'll be a straight line, right? And you now if you look here, you now if uh, x goes up by 20, um, now t would have moved by 4, okay? So you 20 divided by 4, you now that will give you 5. But it's possible to also have another line, okay, that has the same gradient, and you actually have a whole family, okay, uh, of lines, okay, that corresponds to this, okay? So maybe x is your salary, no, and t is your age, no, in future. Okay, maybe that's how you look. Okay, so there is something that is constant, uh, changing with time. Okay, um, so here we have another thing that is probably um, well known among students. No, no, you're going to drop some, if you drop something, you release something from rest. Okay, it's going to experience gravity, a constant. Okay, I'll just round it off to be 10 meters per second square. So if I release this, Okay, you fall to the ground, okay, and it's going to go every one second, it's in the air, okay, it's, it's less than one second in the air, like, okay, it's going to gain 10 meters per second, okay, and so on. So the rate of change of velocity is a constant number, so we use the symbol V for velocity, so dV dt, okay, is equal to G, which is a constant number, okay, and now you get the equation of the straight line with an intercept. Now you can, I can throw it down and my v naught will be a different value. Okay, but I will get all these straight lines. Okay, so I'm going to push a little further, okay, because you can say velocity as the rate of change of position or rate of change of displacement. Okay, and uh, you can rearrange, you, you can further you know, integrate this. Okay, that's something in calculus. And then you get this familiar looking kinematic equation. Okay, so now I'm going to make things a little bit more interesting, hopefully. Okay, so I've added uh, an x behind a constant. So dx dt, okay, is equal to 2x. So it means that the gradient now is going to vary with the value of x. The larger the x I'll have, the steeper will be the graph. The smaller the value of x, the gentler will be the graph. Okay, so if x now is close to zero, okay, on the vertical axis, now I'm going to get something that is quite level. Okay, but if the value of x is large, I'm going to get something steep. Okay, so can you think of function that behave this way? Okay, so for those of you who have learned calculus, okay, so this means that this, you know, you differentiate something and you get back the same expression with a constant. Okay, and the only function that has this, okay, the, the one of the functions that has this behavior is the exponential function. Okay. So here, if we look at this graph here, 
Okay, this is your exponential graph. Okay, so if you look, okay, I'm not sure whether I can get a pointer. No, I can't. Okay, so if um, you look at the value um, x is equal to 20, you no, know, the line is quite steep. You look at x equals to 1, okay, um, no, it's gone to the negative region in the t axis. Okay, so if you just plot out okay, um, the gradient at values, uh, various values of x, no, you will um, get a curve such as this. Okay, and this is another possibility. There's a whole family of them. Okay, if I add a negative sign in front, you know, the graph flips the other way, and here we have exponential decay. Okay, so we have exponential increase and exponential decay. So exponential decay is something that you see okay, uh, in radioactivity. So here, this is a cobalt-60 nucleus. Okay, so if you start off with 10 grams, okay, it's 100% to start. You know, uh, in one half-life, which is 5.27 years, you know, the amount is expected to be reduced to about you know, 5 grams. Okay, so this is a theoretical curve, okay, but this mathematical equation describes it very well. Okay, and this is our exponential decay, and it's just this very simple relationship. You see this also uh, in other um, um, topics in physics. Okay, so here I'm going to teach you something new. Okay, um, I'm going to show you this device okay, that is known as a capacitor. Okay, so I'll probably need Michael to help me with the mic. So today I have this chair, so I think Michael alone would should do the job. So Michael will now be my mic stand. Okay. Right. Michael, the mic stand, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the mic stand decided to stand on this side, okay. Okay, let me shift my chair. Okay, so on, on, on the slides, now you see two parallel plates and it's connected to a 12 volt battery. So when the plate is neutral and it's connected to a battery, okay, the positive end of the battery would draw electrons out of you know, the plate. Okay, if you take electrons out of a neutral plate, okay, you'll be short of electrons and it will become positive. Okay, and you deposit electrons on the other side, so it becomes, you know, you have too many electrons compared to the positive charges, so it becomes negative. Okay, so in this way, you know, we can store charges. And the relationship between the charge that's stored on the capacitor um, and uh, this quantity, capacitance, the charge storing capability of the device, okay, is given as Q equals to C times V. So V is the voltage. So if I change it to a 24 volts battery, no, my V will be 24. Okay, and I will be able to store more charge okay, for the same capacitor. Okay, so now I'm going to charge out a capacitor. Okay, so I'm going to store it with energy. It is a movable mic stand, okay. And now there is energy in the capacitor. Okay, now I'm going to discharge. Okay, so you see, the glimmer of green light, okay, the light is gone very quickly. Okay, so this is an evidence. No, no, okay, so now it has very little energy that's left in the capacitor. Okay, so I, I'll just do this again in case you missed it. Oops. Okay. So you see that the uh, energy uh, from the capacitor is discharged across the LED light. Okay, there's a very interesting relationship. Okay, um, now, so now, now with the capacitor, okay, uh, when it's charged up and I discharge it across a resistor, okay, it follows this interesting relationship. Okay, dQ, dT. So Q is the amount of charge that's stored in the capacitor. It's equal to negative Q divided by the resistance of the resistor multiplied by the capacitance, okay? And this is the equation that we have seen, right? Um, now, here in radioactive decay, the similar form, okay, but it, it's slightly different. Okay, and the graph that describes how Q varies with time now is also this exponential decay, okay? And if you look at the half-life on the horizontal axis, it's the resistance times C. Okay, so now we're going to try something interesting. I'm going to charge up the capacitor. Okay, and I'm going to discharge it 
across a particular resistor. And you can witness exponential decay for yourself. So do you see that the brightness, okay, it gets dimmer and dimmer. Okay, and the brightness follows the exponential decay curve okay, uh, in varies with time with the exponential function. Okay, so now I'm going to discharge it over another resistor. And this resistor has a lower resistance. So you have a low resistance, you expect the half-life to be shorter okay, and the graph to be steeper. Okay, so do you see the rapid reduction okay, in the brightness? Okay, thank you, Michael. <laughs> okay. So, so I hope you have experienced for yourself, you witness exponential decay, okay, in real life. Okay, you can't see it in radioactive um, nuclei, but you can see it in a capacitor circuit. Okay, so the equation, okay, that you've seen is also applicable in first order um, chemical reaction, okay? Um, so if you have a high concentration you know, of a certain reactant, um, A, okay, um, the rate of reaction will be very high, okay, and it decays exponentially. So here uh, is an equation involving hydrogen peroxide. So at the beginning, when you have high concentration, okay, the um, reaction will be very fast. Okay, so now I'm going to do something more interesting. I'm going to modify the right-hand side of the equation a little bit more. Okay, we have that negative sign, negative 2x just now, but now I'm going to add a constant to it. So now it's 5 minus 2x is equal to dx dt. Okay, so if you just ex um, examine this equation a little, okay, you probably will realize, you know, if you have x as 2.5, okay, it'll be 5 minus 2.2 times 2.5, and that will give you 0. Okay, and it looks like this graph here. Okay, and when x is equal to zero, okay, dx dt, the gradient, is going to be five. So it's going to change from a gradient of five at time t equals zero, okay, to a gradient of zero, okay, um, no, when x becomes zero. Okay, and that equation of this graph is given as x is equal to five over two one minus e to the power minus two t. Okay, that's the equation of the green line. Uh, sorry, green line, the blue line. Okay, and if I change from five to three, I get a different line. Okay, so this is like flattening a curve, right? Okay, so this this can happen uh, also uh, in uh, charging a capacitor, or maybe you're eating your dinner. So when you're very hungry, your X is close to zero. Is your maybe uh, how full your stomach is? Okay, you eat very fast. Okay, but when you are close to full, you eat more slowly, so it tapers off. Okay. So this actually happened, okay, uh, this equation is also applied in analyzing okay, free fall, okay, not in a vacuum, but in air. Okay, so when an object is moving through air, okay, the velocity will affect the air resistance. So in this case, okay, it's a constant V times V. So it means that the faster you move, the larger the V, okay, the larger will be the resistive force. So here, if you just release something through air, no, you have a constant minus VV equals to MA. Okay, so here, okay, we will see that this um, uh, velocity, no, we would not just go straight up, but the curve will flatten. Okay, I hope you can make the connection here. Okay, I didn't make my V red okay, on the right-hand side, but I hope you can see the connection. Okay, you have a constant minus something times a variable, okay, which is like the equation that we have here, so you get the same type of graph. Okay, but uh, no, if you have a larger object, okay, uh, falling through air, no, you have to modify the equation, and it's proportional to velocity squared. Okay, so now let's uh, take a look at a simulation here. Okay, so this is uh, produced by a software called Comso. Okay, so you have two objects with different shapes. So when it falls through um, the liquid, no, um, it gives. Uh, now you can see how the position changes with time. Okay, so now we're going to uh, look at a video. Okay, and uh, you'll see this equation in action. Okay, and I'd like to have an opinion. Okay, watch carefully. Okay, I'm going to ask you 
to comment on whether you think this is possible later. Okay, so let's get the movie going. Okay, this is James Wan. Uh, 1995, I think. Okay, he's riding a bike, chasing a runaway plane. Okay, and this plane plunges off the cliff, and James Wan, knowing physics, decides to follow. Okay, and look at him, he's in a streamlined shape, his hands are next to his body, he's going down, and here he spreads his arm a little bit more. Okay. And he catches up with the plane, moves at about the same speed, and grab, and he goes in. Okay. And uh, as all good Hollywood movies, you know, there is a good ending. Okay. So I'll leave you to watch the rest of Golden Eye for yourself. Okay. But I'm just going to post a question to just ask your opinion on this. So do you think. Okay, James Wan will catch up with the plane. Just for fun, okay, uh, let's, let's take a quick look um, at your responses. Okay. okay, so do you think James Wan knows physics? Okay. Huh, still thinking, or you're watching the rest of the movie? <laughs> Okay. Okay, maybe you don't have to write the reason. Maybe you can explain. Okay, yes. Okay, no, because the plane has higher terminal velocity than the person. Interesting. Okay. So what determines terminal velocity? Or the magnitude of terminal velocity? Okay, I think probably you need to think about the shape and the weight. Yes, he's just an actor. Oh man. <laughs> okay, no, because he has less weight than the plane. Okay, so some of the factors of consideration are coming in. Yes, he's lighter and has less air resistance. Okay. Yes, since the air resistance on the plane is higher, coefficient of drag. Okay, good, good. So you're thinking. So it's fun, right, um, to think about physics when you're watching movie. Okay, okay. I mean, make sure you're with the correct company. When my wife watch movies with me and I comment about physics, she get pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, he's too light, and so on. Okay. So for the fun of it, okay, I did a simple simulation using this um, software called Algodoo. Okay. So I'm going to have a plane, okay, flying off the cliff. Okay, and a motorbike chasing after it. Okay, but this guy is not James Wan. And let's see what happens. Okay, so that's the plane off the cliff. And that's James Wan with James Wan's configuration, the motorbike. And you see, no, it's overtaken, overtaking the plane. Oops, and you hit the ground. Okay, so he even overtake the plane. Okay, so this is a very simple simulation. Okay, I'm um, done by one of my students, uh, and he checked out the model of the plane and motorbike and so on. Okay, good. Okay, we're having a lot of responses. Okay. So actually, you know, if you watch uh, carefully, and you see that actually James Bond okay, is actually catching up with the plane. Okay, the distance is getting shorter and shorter. There was no cut and paste uh, in a certain scene. Okay, so um, I believe you know, if the cliff is tall enough, Okay, he will probably catch up with the plane. Okay, so let's say indeed he did catch up with the plane as it was shown okay, in the movie. And if this is how the velocity of the plane changes with time, okay, so now I want you to sketch how the velocity of James Bond changes with time. Okay. So maybe I'll hide the responses. This, okay, so you can you can actually draw with your finger, okay, uh, on your mobile phone, okay. How do you think, okay, the velocity of James Bond, okay, would vary with time, okay, as he catches up the plane, as shown in the movie. Okay, let's uh, let's do it as shown in the movie. 
Okay, how do you think the graph will look? Okay, let's take a look. Hmm. Okay, let me just refresh. Okay, this, so this is a graphic. Ah, okay, I got some answers. Okay, I got three responses. Okay, good. Okay, so this line is correct. It starts after the plane, okay, because it goes off the cliff slightly after James Bond. Okay, V is the vertical velocity. Okay, so here for this graph, okay, it needs to be a little after. It, uh, James Bond didn't go to the edge at the same time as the plane. Okay, good. I think you can change your answers. Ah, smiley face. <laughs> Interesting, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, good consideration. Okay, but but bear in mind, um, James Bond went off after the plane. Okay, so you have to start with the velocity a little after zero. I think you can actually modify your answer even though after you're submitted. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. So this this graph has nice features. Okay, you start later than the plane, and you now if you start later and you want to catch up with something in front, you have to move faster than the thing that's in front of you. Okay, so that feature is given in this graph. You now the blue line has, is larger than in value than the red line representing the velocity of the plane, right? Because you are from behind and you want to catch up and overtake. Uh, just catch up, okay? You will have to, you will have to um, have a larger value. Okay, I got one correct answer. <laughs> okay, so you probably noticed that actually James Bond was changing the shape of his arms. Okay, he was actually trying to slow down, okay, as he gets closer to the door of the plane. Okay, so his air resistance actually increased. Okay, and he tried to match it in a way similar to the velocity of the plane so that he's of relative zero velocity to the plane and he can just climb in easily. Okay, so this is what is happening. And you see the curve intersect a second time. This is when they have similar velocity. And this is probably the time that he gets in. Okay, and for those of you who still remember your physics, you know, the area under a velocity time graph gives you displacement. Okay, and... Um, no, the area under the blue line has to be the same as the area under the red line. Okay. So good. So interesting responses. Okay. So next time uh, you can uh, put on your physics thinking hat. Okay. Uh, keep on thinking. Just keep thinking about physics. <laughs> okay. And uh, no, enjoy the movie. Okay. Interesting answers. Okay. So let us uh, move on um, to... Other things. Okay, so this is how you know, uh, you know, we can sketch the graph. Okay, so the curved red line okay, will be James Bond. Okay, so at the beginning, James Bond um, you know, puts his hands close to his body okay, so that he has a low air resistance and he can you know, overtake the plane. And after that, he has to spread out his arms to slow down to catch up the plane to get in. And the area under the two lines are the same because that's vertical displacement. Okay, so here we can look at other similar systems and you see that the equations look very similar. Okay, so you just learn you know, how to solve this first order differential equation. You can use it in cooling, resistor circuit, chemical reaction, radioactive decay, bi um, and biological systems. So it's actually very useful. So just now Prof Chong was saying that you know, physics is very versatile. So this is just a simple illustration Okay, of the versatility of physics. You can even use it in economics. Okay. So simple message, more curves in uni, okay, but often you find common underlying principles. Okay, so recently you now we, we talk about flattening the curve. Okay, and if you go search papers related to COVID, you now you see you no know, differential equations. So now if you look at equation one again, you have ds dt equals negative beta s i. So here you probably recognize, oh, this looks a little similar to the equation that we've just seen. But of course, there's a one layer of complication because i is also a variable, okay, and it also varies with time in the second equation. Okay, but don't worry. I mean, no, you have four years to learn all these things. No hurry. We're just doing this very quickly in just like 
20 minutes and you have, uh, presumably you have learned quite a bit already. Okay, I hope it gets you excited. So there are also quantities that vary with space. Okay, so from this point onwards, I will go a little faster. Okay, just to do the span of topics. Okay, so there are things that varies with space. For example, the height of buildings, the temperature in a room, the wind speed, and so on. Okay, so every point in space, you know, the quantity is different. Okay, so an example here in one dimension, you now you have um, a light source this uh, you no know, on an uh, absorbent material okay uh, so if it's thick you no know, less of it will get through and here you see how the intensity changes with x okay and here x now is not time but here x is the thickness okay so now we're going to go up to 3d okay i'm going to bring you to mount everest okay although i think there are some covid cases there but here we're just going there virtually okay so here you see a contour plot of the height, okay, um, uh, for Mount Everest. So just a very simple question for you, okay, just looking at this contour plot and thinking of the meaning behind this contour plot, okay, can you tell me which um, point is steeper? Is it point A or is it point B? Okay, so I'm going to deliver this on learning catalytics. Okay, so this is actually the beginning of learning vector calculus. Okay, I'm just letting you have a slick, sneak preview okay, of what you're going to learn in semester two. Okay, you're going to learn calculus not just in one dimension, but two and three dimensions as well. Okay, so one of the things that you learn is the steep, steepest descent. Okay, so now if you look at these two points A and B, okay, which point do you think is steeper? See, one way you can think about it is, you know, if you move a certain distance, how much do you fall? So every line that you cross here okay, is 100 meters. So if the lines are very close to each other, okay, you just move a little bit, you fall a great vertical distance. So it will be steeper. Okay, so I think majority of you, okay, good. Okay, you selected B. So you're ready for second SEM mathematics. Okay you have the correct intuition and keep it that way. Okay, so there are also other quantities that varies with space. Okay, the temperature in the room. Okay, and airflow. Again, something very important now because of COVID. And uh, you know, you see this symbol, this inverted triangle, which strike a lot of fear in students. Okay, this is um, the derivative in 3D space. Okay, there are also quantities that varies in both space and time. Okay, so here you have an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so what is happening here is you have a changing electric field and it gives you a changing magnetic field and it gives you a changing electric field and it gives you a changing magnetic field. So this happens you know, even in your mobile phone. You know, in, there's actually a little antenna inside your mobile phone. So the charge is, if you jiggle the charge up and down at a very high frequency, okay, um, you know, as, as long as it's oscillating, you, know, you produce this um, electromagnetic radiation. And there, you know, you can actually uh, communicate, you know, with your friends. Okay, so this is something that changes with time and space, okay? And that's uh, electromagnetic wave, okay? And it, there's a whole spectrum of them, okay, depending on the wavelength, but they all travel at a speed of light 3 times 10 power 8 meters per second. So it means that one second, okay, if you travel at this speed, okay, you've gone around the Earth seven times, okay, so seven and a half times, you want to be more precise. Okay, it's a huge velocity. So you can watch soccer matches live in UK, even though it's far away, okay, because you have all these signals. So more interestingly, you know, if you take a certain gas, okay, in this case, hydrogen, okay, um, now if you look you know, at what's inside a hydrogen atom, um, now you have your proton and your electron, and you have discrete energy levels. So um, now when um, you go from excited state to the ground state, you no, know, it will give you um, a certain color of light. Okay, and there are, every gas would have its distinct. I would say I would call this barcode of light, and you can identify you no know, a gas 
that is even far, far away. Okay, so for example, how do you know there's hydrogen in the sun? And uh, you know what the elements present in distant star, even though you can't go there. Okay, so you can collect light uh, from these far away places and analyze the spectrum. Okay, you don't have to perform any chemical chemistry experiments, right? So in this sense, uh, physics is better than chemistry. Okay. So there's another thing that physics is better than chemistry. Okay, if you look at this quantum dots, okay, in chemistry, if you want to get different colors, okay, you need to try different compounds to get the color that you want. Okay, in physics, now you have this quantum dot, okay, and this equation tells us that if I vary the size of the quantum dot, okay, I'm going to get different colors. Okay, so here you see um, now the size and how it varies with the color. Okay, so the bigger the quantum dot, the more, the longer will be the wavelength of the light emitted. Okay, and this is used in actually consumer technology. Okay, your iPhone, you know, there's actually quantum dots in them. Okay, to give you your RGB. Okay, and of course, uh, some uh, TV also you make use of quantum dot dots technology. Okay, and of course, uh, in biology, you can use it as a, a cell tracker. Okay, so we have spoken about space, varying, uh, sorry, um, things that vary with time and things that vary with space. So now you can look at space time. Okay, so if I mention space time, Okay, if you're nerd enough, you think of relativity. <laughs> okay, and relativity, special relativity you learn first. Okay, it's just based on two postulate, two foundational rules. Okay, and they're not difficult to understand. Okay, the first is laws of nature are the same in all inertial frames. So if you're moving in a car with a velocity compared to someone who's stationary, the laws of physics in the car, you know, and that person uh, that's on the ground, stationary, it will be the same you know, if the car is moving at a constant velocity. Okay, and the speed of light, no matter who measures it in a vacuum, will always be the same value. Just based on these two very simple postulates or foundational rules, you know, we can de derive very exotic um, things such as length contraction, time dilation, and after a few pages of mathematics, you get E equals mc squared. Okay, um, so why do I say this thing? Okay, because in life, you, know, you will encounter a lot of other things that is not related to physics. But you also have this pattern of specific grounding rules, and you have to deduce all the implications. Okay, um, taking COVID situation as an example, my rule is everyone must wear masks. Okay? And you can see, you can derive all the consequences if everyone wears a mask. Or everyone must get vaccinated. Okay, so what are the consequences? Uh, no, on the social, uh, in the society, and on the businesses. Okay, so there is also a, a very important skill that you learn that's transferable to other areas of life. Okay, so I think this is probably a good point to end. So if you've got any questions, you could email me at this email address here. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Ho, for preparing for this mock lecture, you know, with the Learning Catholic software, the live demo, the video. I think it also goes to show how much effort that the NTU lecturers will put in to teach their students. Now, let us move on to our Q&A segment where we answer all of your burning questions. I hope you guys did ask some questions along the way. Ooh, there's questions. Okay, okay. Let's get right to it and we'll try our very best to answer all of it. Okay, the first question is by Anonymous. Oh, it's all Anonymous. All right. So the first question is, when I look at the graduation employment survey, it states only 48% are in full-time. Should this be a concern? Perhaps. Yeah, I can answer Watch that. You? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the main reason for this kind of statistics is that our graduates are very picky. So we have students going for internship, and then the internship employer offer them the job. They say, no, thank you. So therefore, you know, uh, and, and, the, and the main reason why they're so picky is they want to try a few more internships before they actually decide which one they want to do. So, so that will usually fall outside of the uh, six months window that uh, MOE gives us to do the graduate employment survey. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I can add to what Siwan has said. So this number is um, for the year where the students graduate. Is the, this is the COVID year. Yeah. So everyone's percentage is on the low side. Okay, but if you look at pre-COVID times, okay, um, the physics percentage is nearly 80%. Okay, 
Okay, um, and physics students actually has a lot of um, uh, job opportunities okay, because of your area of training. Okay, so a lot of our students are going to data analytics, uh, cybersecurity. Okay, um, and um, so, um, so while it's a concern, but I think you should also look at the full-time employment um, percentage, which is more than 90%. Okay, so you get in some form of jobs. Okay, so you can be in an exploratory mode okay, to find out what you like. Okay, and, um, you know, and from there, decide what you like to do, okay, what you're passionate about. You know, and when the situation becomes better, you, know, you land yourself in a job that you like. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ho and Prof. Chong. Let's move on to our next question. Any advice or preparations for those that are taking the course but wants to pursue a teaching career in the future? Um, Prof Chung? I think realistically speaking, there is no teaching career in the future in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyone who wants to teach after completing a physics degree program might want to consider teaching in the United Kingdom <laughs> yeah, or elsewhere because... Uh, we, we have one graduate who actually, after doing our bachelor's course, uh, went over to UK uh, to do the teacher's teaching certification, and then he, he, he started teaching in Scotland. Yeah, I, yeah. I can add to what uh, Prof Chong has uh, mentioned. Okay, uh, the, the, the reason why um, no, uh, teaching is going to be harder, is harder and harder to get a teaching job is because of the declining birth rate. So you've seen um, junior college emerging, and uh, secondary school merging. Okay, um, so we are not sure how long this trend will persist. Okay, but from time to time there will be old physics teachers retiring. <laughs> okay, or, or someone who decides to do a, a physics teacher who decide to move on to a different career. So I think, I think from time to time there will still be jobs. Um, small demand. Yeah, yeah, there will be some demand. Small demand though. Yeah. Um, in the teaching career, so I think it, it would be good to check from time to time, uh, you know, with MOE on the demands. Okay, um, no, in the teaching profession. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ho and Prof. Chiang. All right, let's move on to our next question. Are there any astrophysics modules available? Uh, uh, in NTU, actually, call them courses rather than modules. Uh, but yes, uh, there is one available. Uh, right now, it's still called cosmology. It's a third-year course. Uh, but we have changed uh, the, 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 the syllabus in the, the course uh, so as to make it half, make half of it uh, actually astrophysics. Mm. Yeah. So half astrophysics, um, half cosmology. cosmology. So there is also a co another course in general relativity. That's the fourth year course. Yeah, and then there is also another course offered in the triple E school that's uh, related to, it's more like astronomy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are also courses on MOOC that you can sign up. So, so there are some of these courses whereby you can credit transfer. Um, and of course, you know, when you go on overseas exchange when it is available, you, know, you can also take um, astrophysics courses uh, overseas. Wow, that's so cool. Thank you so much, yeah. Dr. Ho and Prof. Xiong. All right, next question. When will the book <laughs> list <laughs> and class <laughs> schedule be made available? You sound like one of my... <laughs> Students' parents are moving on. Second question, there's two questions. What kind of preparatory revision is advice for students before they begin first classes in August? I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so so the usually the, 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 the course information and class schedule are made available on uh, something called NTU Learn. So it's not open to public. Uh, so it's only after you are matriculated as an NTU student then you get sent this kind of information. Uh, but for students who want to prepare early, uh, of course, they can review what they have learned beforehand, before, uh, or they can come to our physics and math prep courses, uh, which are uh, conducted in July. Uh, I think, yeah. so Yong does the physics prep course. Who does the math prep? Uh, Chen Yu. Dr. Uh, Chen, Dr. Chen Yu, yes. So we, we have the physics preparatory course. So it's 12 sessions, three hours each, and we'll hold it in the evening. So if you're working in the day, you can still come for this preparatory course and we'll video record it. So as long as you are a matriculated, no, sorry, as long as you have accepted our offer, okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, email notice will be sent to you and you can actually uh, sign up for this course. Okay, and of course, as I've said, you know, it will be done okay, either on Zoom or NS MS Teams this year, but it will be interactive like what you've experienced just now. Okay, uh, if you're interested in book lists, 
um, you, you can actually speak to your, some of your seniors, okay, um, because uh, we do not expect big changes in the book list. Uh, or you can speak to some faculty. We can actually recommend you some books. Um, so the year one physics textbook is um, published by Pearson. It's the Young and Friedman, um, whatever edition, the latest edition, okay? Uh, if you want to uh, learn quantum mechanics, okay, I can't remember often. Uh, QM one, <laughs> okay. So so there are resources on 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 the website also. Uh, you can actually yes, there's a, a very good resource that you can check out. It's the Feynman lecture series. All three volumes are free available online. Okay, you just type Feynman lectures. Okay, it's very fun to read, and you get a lot of insights uh, into physics. So so I would suggest that you take a look at the Feynman lectures as well. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ho. So join first, worry later, okay? <laughs> okay, next question by Anonymous. How will taking the pure physics track with applied physics major, PEs and BDEs, I'm sorry, I don't know what that means, but yeah. help me in my career pathway? Uh, okay, sure. so if you are doing the pure physics track, uh, you cannot take the applied physics courses as PEs. So you can only take them as BDEs, which means that you first have to clear your uh, pure physics uh, PEs. Uh, and of course, you're welcome to do that. Uh, uh, historically, we only have one student who almost completed a double major in uh, physics and uh, applied physics. Uh, now he is actually, uh, I, I don't know whether he's still teaching, but he's definitely in the teaching service. Okay. Song Wee. Oh, Song Wee, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you so if you, so, so for me to answer the question uh, more completely, more fully, uh, I will need to know what your career pathway is. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure, you know, uh, taking applied physics courses is going to help uh, for anything that requires only pure physics. Yeah, so, so there are also a lot of possibilities, um, you know, uh, in terms of minor. You can actually take minor in a lot of uh, other courses. Uh, can be philosophy, creative writing, communications. You know, so, so if you want to expand the scope or your career options, uh, I would suggest that you know, after you join NTU, you, know, you explore some of these possibilities. So four years is a long time for you to discover your interests and discover the possibilities. And of course, the job market is dynamic. You know, it changes. Okay, so you just want to make sure you have equipped yourself with the correct skills okay, and uh, now you can maximize your career options. Thank you, Dr. Ho. All okay, right, for our next question, how does the new ICC curriculum vary from the experience of the past batches? Dr. Ho. <laughs> okay, I'll answer that okay, because I'm in the committee designing the curriculum. Okay. Um, so here, very important is uh, this is uh, uh, interdisciplinary in nature. Okay, a lot of them. So your classmates will be someone not typically probably not from physics no you'll be someone from engineering humanities or business school and so on okay so it is like uh, no you're, you're not in silos according to your discipline okay so you can exchange ideas okay you'll be interesting to see what uh, your friends in other disciplines think uh, of a certain um, question okay or a certain topic Okay, and uh, we, we, you work with them in group projects, so, and you'll be high, we want it to be highly interactive. Okay, so we are still thinking of, um, you know, given the current COVID situation, we're trying to still design the experience so that you know, in the event that we have to do all this virtually, you know, we can still capture as much of this collaborative experience as possible. So this mimic your work life you know, in future. If you go to a company, you know, it is very likely that you work with colleagues who are on who are in um, no, uh, with different training and different degrees okay um, so in the past batches uh, it's less deliberate okay so now with this new cu cu curriculum okay we are making this more deliberate and we want the learning to be authentic okay and the assessment also to be authentic okay so this is something that uh, what we're try trying to drive uh, and and we hope that you no know, you will have a great experience okay um, compared to your seniors Thank you, Dr. Ho. All right, for our next question. I am joining NTU Physics this year. Congrats! And I am interested in understanding complex functions at a deeper and more rigorous, <laughs> rigorous level. Can I choose to take complex analysis, MATH, in year two? So I assume that complex analysis is like for a higher... 
Yes, yeah. yeah. so ah. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the, the the it depends whether you are doing PHMS or just PHY. Uh, so PHMS students would have to do the maths course, and if you are already if you are on the PHMS, actually it is still it is still unlikely that you can be ready for uh, the complex uh, analysis course in year two, because that is typically a year three course. Okay. okay, so okay. if you do it uh, from PHY, then the chances of you being ready to do it in year two is uh, very slim. Uh, mm -hmm. And more importantly, uh, we require both our PHY and PHMS students uh, to take uh, a, uh, a course uh, that is meant for physics students. So they have to take that course. Uh, and unfortunately, it, uh, it is mutually exclusive with uh, mm. the complex analysis. So there are a way, few ways out. One way is for you to just sit into complex analysis and not offer it uh, officially. Uh, but if you think that you know you will die if it doesn't <laughs> appear on your transcript, uh, we, will, we will make it possible for you to do something like that. Uh, but uh, most important is that uh, you should take the complex analysis without uh, sacrificing the, the course that we intend all physics students to learn. Uh, which is called complex methods for the sciences. Mm. So if you're truly interested in something, you know, there, are, there are many ways you can pursue. Okay, you don't really have to do it officially. Yeah. When there's a will, there's a way. Yep. All right. Last question of the day. Mm. Will group theory be made compulsory <laughs> in physics, PHME, PHMS, <laughs> once I enter NTU physics in 2023? How is it important? Ooh, group theory. Okay, so... Uh, so when physicists talk about group theory, actually we are talking about group representation theory. Uh, so there is a group theory that is, uh, I think, a second year course in mathematics. But group representation theory is a higher level course. Mm. So if let's say someone wants to, someone who is doing physics, wants to learn uh, the kind of group theory that is useful for physics, uh, then they need to make sure they satisfy all the prerequisites in order to take the group representation theory. Uh, mm. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we as practicing physicists, we don't see that as particularly important, because mm. uh, we, what what happens is that when 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 we teach a course and we feel that you know group theory ideas are important and necessary for understanding the material, we will teach that part of the group representation theory in the course itself. Mm. So you do not need to actually uh, do to learn. You do not need to learn group representation in uh, in a rigorous way from the mathematicians uh, in order to do the physics. But of course, you know, if you're aiming higher, then of course uh, you, you should, you know, learn from the, 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 the you should have, get the foundations built up very f firmly. Uh, but in that case, you know, uh, you can then take the group representation theory course uh, as a broadening and deepening elective, mm. uh, but subject to you fulfilling all the prerequisites. Yeah. So actually, if you're interested in, there's group and there is algebra, right? So if you're interested in group theory in the context of analyzing crystal structures, I think there are courses in chemistry um, that you can attend. Um, and then they use the character tables and then they, they, they will analyze crystal structures. So, so it depends on you know, what you like. I don't think it will make compulsory, right? It's, it's not compulsory. Or is it compulsory for PHMS? No, no, not compulsory. No, it's not compulsory. So, so you have a choice. Okay, we are democratic on this. Okay, um, and of course, you now the algebra you see it in quantum mechanics. You no, know, if you talk about you know, Pauli spin matrices, you no, know, that's a SU two, right? So, so you you will learn it you now when you are doing as what Prof Chong said. You now you, you 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 do the just in time learning, okay? So, so but you will not go derive, you no. Know, um, all the exotic things uh, in uh, groups and algebra. Yeah, you can do that in a maths course. So I know there are students who, who did an optional uh, acceleration uh, no, in, in algebra, in Lee algebra, okay, with a maths professor, and to study the applications in physics. Okay, of course, Lee algebra is quite important in particle physics. So again, it depends on your interests. Okay, we have you know, various avenues you know, to suit your interests. Thank you so much, Dr. Ho and Prof. Xiong. And unfortunately, time waits for no man. Our earth continues to spin and we have come to the end of our session. That's all we have for SPMS PAP's e-open house. If you guys still have any more questions or you have any unanswered questions, you may do your questions to PAP's Telegram chat at NTU underscore physics. 
Also, don't forget to scan this QR code that you're seeing on your screen right now for a feedback survey form to let us know what you think about SPMS eOpen House program. You may also check out SPMS official website for a 3D virtual tour of the SPMS building. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I hope you guys enjoyed the session as much as I did. Goodbye. Just keep thinking. Bang, bang. Just thinking. Easy.